Hi, welcome to Pay It Forward. Today I'm going to be showing you the first in a series of little outfits for my series of animal dolls. Now today we're going to be making the little skirt and the little neck ruffle and the little pendant. Now we won't need to have any pattern pieces for these so there aren't templates. You will need though to click on the link in the description below. You'll be able to download your little pattern sheet that gives you all of the measurements needed for this little outfit. Now remember that these little dolls are all going to be made the same with the same body. So there'll be several outfits available as we move forward and of course several di different animals available. But today we're going to be making this little outfit for this little naked bunny. So how about you download your pattern sheet and we'll get started. So first we're going to be making the little neck ruffle for our little bunny, just like this one. You have your measurements for your two uh, long rectangles of fabric and that is 55 centimetres by 6 centimetres. Now you can add some width to the 6 centimetres if you like, if you would like a fuller neck ruffle. I find that 6 centimetres gives you a nice tight little ruffle and it doesn't overpower the little, little doll's face. So the fabrics, of course, that I've chosen are the same two fabrics that we've been using. So the little neck ruffle is, is basically going to be showing up as this colour and this, the underside of the neck ruffle will be the colour that I've, the same print that I've used on the arms. That just, the whole outfit tends to blend together really well if you use the same two fabrics. But of course, you can mix it up absolutely any way that you like. So all we do is pin those two together, take this one to the machine and we actually sew around the entire outside edge just using about a three to four millimeter seam allowance, the same as we've worked on throughout the doll. And we just leave an opening here of probably around about three to four centimeters just so that we can turn that whole strip through. I've sewn up my strip and I've left my little opening, but before I turn that one through, I'm going to just take those corners off just so that we get a nice clean point. Turning that one through is fairly easy. All the way through and we're going to push our seams out, push our corners out and I'm actually going to take that one over to the iron and I will push all those seams, those little corners right out and all those seams out or roll them out as I usually do and then I'm going to give it a press. So once I have pressed the entire strip, I'm going to go back to the machine and I'm going to sew a top stitching, um, a line of top stitching all the way around the entire strip and that will close up our opening at the end as we do that. And that little top stitching stitch is only just about three millimeters in from the edge. So as close as to the edge as you can because it just gives the little neck ruffle a nice professional finish you can see there. So my strip is now turned through and pressed and now you can see that little top stitching line all the way through there. Now I have just taken a measurement and used my ruler, taken a measurement and measured exactly half along that strip and I've drawn a line, I'm just using a just a wax pencil and just drawn a line straight down the centre of that strip. It really doesn't matter which side you, you do that on. I tend to do it on the side that's going to be most, most visible, even though it won't be seen. Just when I put the ruffle on, I find that, the, that it ties up easier that way. So I've drawn my line right down the centre. Now I'm using a pearl thread to do our gathering and it's really quite simple. It takes a little bit of time and you may think well we could do that on the machine but I just find by using a pearl thread what you end up with because we're going to do two rows you end up with a nice little tie at the back 
that's very secure and can be taken on and off over and over again. So it just, it gathers and it also acts as the tie as well. So it just cuts out another step in your less work for you is better. So I cut my length of her lay to be just a little bit longer than my strip. And we start at the end and it's simply a matter of just making a running stitch all the way along just this side of that little line that you've made. So you can see that while it does take a little bit of time, it's not difficult to do and it's really done in a couple of minutes and we get a lovely even and very strong ruffle. So I just pull that through, I little, leave my little tail in hanging there for tying up and I'm gonna make my way along right to the end and finish off and have another tail end hanging there and then I'm going to re-thread my needle again and do exactly the same thing only this time I'll be stitching just the other side of this centre line. So now I've finished my two rows of stitching with my pearl thread you can see I have my tails hanging there and now it is just simply a matter of pulling up our, our gathers now I like to work them towards the middle and you'll find that they'll gather up really nicely and evenly. And I work from side to side, holding one end and pulling them through. Just making sure that my little neck ruffle isn't twisting. That's why if we work from side to side we can control all of that. And keep going until your neck ruffle is really quite tiny, really pulled up quite tight because that little animal's neck is not very big. Twist your ruffle so that they're all sitting straight. You can see that you could place that neck ruffle on this way or this way. Obviously I want it to match my little bunny torso. So then it's just a matter of popping it on for size. Now you really want that centre to pull in nice and snug around bunny's neck or your dolls, whichever animal doll you're, you are dressing here. And you can see from behind but it's just a matter of taking those two ends there pulling them in nice and tight make sure that the little ruffle is settled nice tight into that little neck curve and tie them off a couple of times I make sure that I tie them off in, in, a, in a double loop bow so that I can at any time I can take that ruffle off so it does mean that when my, the, my other patterns come up for my other little outfits of boys, girls, different little outfits, you'll be able to make a, a whole series of clothing for the one little animal doll, which is really cool. But you can see already that that little, that little ruffle now looks like it's, it's actually part of, part of an outfit. See now you see that little neck ruffle all tied up. Just a simple little bow at the back. And that's nice and tidy. So now we can get on with making the skirt. So the things you'll need to make the skirt, your pattern piece is just one rectangle. And of course it is the same fabric as your, as your torso. So that again, that little dress look continues. And that measurement for that one is, is on your little measurement sheet, but it is actually 55 centimeters by 20 centimeters deep. And you can see there that the first thing that I've done is I've pressed up a little hem. So I've pressed up just about, just under a centimetre and then the same again so that we have no raw edges showing. And this is for the bottom hem around the base of the skirt. Now I like to add a bit of a trim on, on the base of the skirt. It just adds a little something. You can use any kind of trim you like or you can just have a plain hem, or perhaps you can 
sew your little hemline in and you may wish to add some little rickrack or braid or something like that. So, but for me, I'm going to be adding my little bit of lace. Now, normally I would use a cotton lace. I'm using what I have here today, which is actually a stretch lace, which I wouldn't normally like to use, but it just means that I won't be stretching it out as I go along. So what I'm going to do is, as I sew that little hemline, I'm going to incorporate that little piece of lace all the way along and then I will have a nice little bit of lace showing on that bottom edge and my hem will be nicely finished. So we do that one. The only other thing that you're going to need for this little skirt is a little length of, I'm using six millimeter elastic. I cut that piece to around about 15 centimeters. Of course, you can cut it longer and then snip off the excess, but that's about the width that we'll need. So I'm just going to sew that little piece of lace all the way along that hemline there, right till the end. You can see that I've sewn that, that little hemline along there. And while I've done that, of course, I've incorporated my lace, so it's all done in, in one little stitch, and that just gives a nice finish to the bottom of the skirt. So next thing we do is we just put right sides together, and we're going to sew up our center back seam, matching up our hemline with our top, and it is just, just a little four millimeter seam. And then once I've done that, I'm going to overlock that edge with a little zigzag stitch just to keep that, that seam from fraying. Here is my little back seam stitched. And you can see that I've just given that a little zigzag stitch just to make sure that little seam is neat and tidy. And then I've given that a press. And our next step is to create our casing on the waistband for our elastic to go through. That's simply a matter. I've taken that to the iron and I've just pressed the top edge under just a few millimetres and then pressed it over again so that there's no raw edges and just wide enough to accommodate, to leave room for me to sew a line of stitching all the way around so that my elastic can pass through there. So I'm just using the six millimetre elastic. You may be using a different width, but that will just, that turned over just enough so that I can make that stitch. Now I will leave a little opening at the back by the back seam, just a little opening where I can pop that elastic in and thread it through. So I'm just going to sew all the way around that top edge. Now that I have that little casing sewn up there, have my little space there, I'm just using just a little safety pin through the end of my elastic and I'm able to go up in through that that little opening that we've left and I'm going to make my way all the way around that little casing until my elastic is threaded. Just to save that other end popping through, you can just pop a little safety pin in there so that you won't lose that end as you go through because sometimes that happens and that's a little frustrating. So that will just hold that there. We'll just make our way all the way around until we come out the other side. So you can see I've made my way all the way around there. My little skirt is inside out at the moment, but I've just popped it on my little bunny just to check to see the length and see just how tight I want that to be. We want it fairly easy to, to pull on and off. Little hands might want to undress their dollies every now and then. So it's just a matter of, I've pinned those two ends together through that loop. Now I'm just going to machine stitch those together I'll just trim the ends and then that will pop back into that little hemline. So a couple of stitches on that elastic and that allows me to pop that, that elastic in. And it's hidden in there in that little casing and that little section there, we would just close on the machine. You probably find that easier to sew this whole hem on if you have a free arm option on your sewing machine. I'll just pop that under and close that little opening. So now you see our bunny has her sweet little skirt and she's all ready for her next little piece, which is our little pendant that we're going to make up in colors to suit her. To make our little pendant, these are the pieces you're going to need. First of all, the templates 
for the little heart pendant are actually with my video for how to make a bunny doll. So you'll find that in the templates, which gives you the templates, pattern pieces for, for the whole bunny. And they're just, it's just a simple little heart shape. You will need a front and back. Now I have interfaced them. I find them easier to work with, with interfacing. The same fusible woven interfacing that I always use. It's just a light to medium weight. And I've chosen a color, two colors that are contrasting that suit little bunnies outfit that we have here and I'm going to go for the chocolate with a little tan behind and then we will have a little assortment of buttons that also coordinate with the colours in her dress. We need a little single piece of felt that template is also available and that is for the filler. It's just to give the, the little pendant a little bit of volume. You'll also need just a little strip it can be a little strip of ribbon, a little strip of got leather suede here, any type of ribbon that will just tuck in there that will make us a little loop to hang around her neck. So to start with, we take our front and you choose an assortment of buttons and just work out your positioning and ha of how you want them to look. And it really can be anything, can be absolutely anything. And you can use little beads if you like. You might be able to, um, you might have little tiny bows and all sorts of different things that you can put. It's, there's really no rules. I just use buttons because my whole, all of my clothing with my dolls tends to be fairly um, folksy, maybe a little bit retro sometimes. So I, I really like that plain uh, sort of functional sort of look. That's just a little bit homemade -y looking. And so you just choose a selection. Now I've already done this for the sake of time. You can see there I've already sewn on my little buttons in the pattern that I want. So we'll move ahead with that one. And that's just as simple as sewing them on. And you can use any color thread that you like. Make sure that when you're putting your buttons on, um, we're going to be sewing a blanket applique stitch around the whole exterior edge. So you must leave a little bit of room so that's not too difficult for you to do. So the next step here is that we're going to add our, our little, using a just clear craft glue, we're going to be adding our back filler. And we're actually going to glue these pieces together before we sew them. It just makes it easier. So just a little bit of clear craft glue. First of all, I'm going to make sure that that little loop is going to be glued in nicely. Just folding that one over. Having a fair bit of excess is a good idea because it means that it's really secured in there. So we pop that one on first. We only need to leave a little bit showing at the top there. Just going to pop that one on. And then we're going to add some more glue to the back of our felt filler. This can be any coloured felt, it really doesn't matter, it won't be seen. And that one just sits on top. And by having that one there, that also secures that little loop. Then we're going to just add some glue to the back of our front where we have already sewn our buttons on. Make sure all your edges are nicely lined up. Try not to have glue on fingers. And we're just going to press those edges together. You can use your little clips if you like, your little wonder clips, just to pinch those edges in for a few moments. 
We're going to let that one dry just for about two or three minutes. My little part should be dry now so I can remove those little clips which have held that, those edges together really well. And that's nicely sealed. I'm going to sew around the entire outside edge of this little heart using, I'm using Perlé thread and I'm going to be sewing a blanket stitch. Now if you're not fully uh, versed in sewing a blanket stitch, I do have a video that will show you in great depth how to do this stitch. I'm going to show you here today anyway, but just in case. So I come with my needle, I come in from behind and I want to come out between those two layers there. And you can see I just come in a little way and I have a knot at the end of my thread and I can often just pull that knot because felt has open fibres, I can often just pull that little knot just into those fibres and we can hide it in, in between the layers there. Just use my awl to make that hole just a little bit bigger. We don't want the knot to come all the way through. You see how that's just popped in there? Well that's just going to be nicely hidden there and then we can start on our stitch. Now it's just a tiny little stitch, it's probably only Gosh, it's only two or three millimetres um, along. So I travel along. For my first stitch, I'm going to travel along. And I'm going to travel along probably two millimetres, two millimetres in. And I'm coming through, I went through both sides of the fabric and I'm coming out, my needle is coming out through the loop. I'll show you again. And that's held that little knot there now. I like to tuck my thread over my finger I'm going to go travel a little further along and through both sides evenly out through the loop. You see that that thread is coming out through the loop and that's what creates that little winding top stitch. That is classic for a blanket stitch. We'll see that happening. We'll do a few more. Try and keep your stitches nice and even because it is after all in this case we're using it as a decorative stitch it can be used in many ways you see how that little line is happening there and that's our lovely binding edge which will work all the way around the outside so we're going to keep going with this stitch right around till we get back around and meet up here you can see I've made my way all the way around there and I've come up and I'm about to do my last stitch. So I'm going to show you how I finish off there. So when you're, when you're sewing around a little shape like this, make sure that you're always anticipating where you're putting your stitches so you can try and lay your stitches out in a way that they're all going to end up and that last stitch is going to be evenly spaced. So you can see my last stitch will just sit right in here in the middle. I'm still just going to do it in the same way. Just like this and you can see that where I started there's a little space see there's just a little space for that first stitch and I can now fill that and cast off at the same time so I'm going to hop into that hole I'm going to come out at the back of the heart pull that one in come out at the back of the heart and I can just go back and forth back through the same hole back and forth just a couple of times and you'll find that that will secure those little threads and just snip that little end off and then it's all quite tidy on the back as well, which is exactly what you want. So our next step, of course, is just to pop a little tie. So choose a thread. I just use a pearl thread. Again, this one's a heavy apply. And whatever colour suits, whatever you can find will work. And it's just a matter of slipping that one through that little loop. And then we're going to tie it up pop that one through then we're going to tie it up around our little animal doll's neck. So here we are all finished with our little skirt, our little neck ruffle and our little pendant. It's just such a lovely simple little outfit to which will suit any one of my animal dolls. 
I also would like to say that I'm using very plain cottons and I'm keeping it all very basic. I'm giving you the basics here and you can elaborate them on them any way you like. I'm not somebody who likes to work with very lightweight fabrics, but I can imagine this little, this little outfit pattern with some chul and some lovely ballerina style lace wouldn't they look wonderful and they would suit any of the animal dolls so I'll leave it to you people to be terribly creative I'll just stay with my my very simple little designs but I'm sure that you can make some wonderful things I look forward to hearing from you and seeing what you've done well thank you for joining me today making this little outfit for one of your little animal dolls I would like to encourage you all these little dolls and the whole series involved and certainly any of my projects I'm very happy for any of you to if you perhaps you have a craft stall or you attend craft fairs maybe you just have a little online business and you make products to sell I'm very happy for you to make my creations sell them make yourself some dollars enjoy making them and if that helps your family then this is what this is what pay it for channel is really all about so I really encourage you to do that they certainly the little dolls are absolutely marvelous for baby shows and and, and craft markets because you can see if you keep if you keep the uh, the styling of their clothing simple they're really quite quick to make so if it's going to help your family go right ahead that just makes me very very happy so if you've enjoyed this video make sure you give me a thumbs up that would be absolutely beaut remember to subscribe because you want to be able to see all of the little animal dolls and all of the little outfits that are coming up and there certainly will be quite a few so I hope you have enjoyed this I hope it's benefited you please use them please remember if something good comes your way to pay it forward because we all can until next time it's Huru from me